Hey guys, it's your favorite gold miner prospector and geologist, Jeff Williams, and I'm gonna show you how you can get gold from iron pyrite. So let's get into it. Now, for those folks out there that don't know what iron pyrite is, it's basically fool's gold. And all that means is that there's one atom of sulfur and one atom of iron that have bonded together. In my last video, I explained how gold travels in a sulfur complex, and if gold is traveling in sulfur and it happens to come in contact with iron, it forms iron pyrite, or fool's gold. And prospectors have been using iron pyrite or fool's gold as an indicator on where gold deposits can be because gold can travel with the sulfur and then it binds with the iron and the gold will start to form and precipitate on the outer lattices. Yeah, I know you're saying, Jeff, get on with it. We don't need a science lesson. All right, all right, I hear you. I'm gonna show you the steps involved in getting the gold out of these sulfides and I'm gonna tell you what type of sulfides best carry gold. Ah, but you didn't know that. So let's get into it. Now, if you got sulfides and you think there's gold in it, there's one or two two ways of figuring out if there is gold in those sulfides. Because trust me, all sulfides don't carry gold, okay? First thing you need to do is you gotta crush it down into a fine powder. Now, if you don't wanna mess with all these steps I'm about to tell you, you can send this stuff in and have it fire assayed. And I'll leave a link down below to a good laboratory that'll do that for you. But the first step is we're gonna crush this marker down. So come on, let's go. Now what I like to do is run mine wet because it keeps the dust down. But you gotta keep a flow of water in here to wash it out or it'll turn into a paste or a mud, clog everything up. But you don't want too much water in there, <laughs> you're gonna have a mess. All right, now that you got all your sulfides crushed down, now you gotta get the sulfides away from the magnetite and any other material that was trapped in there. And I like using these gold hog multi-sluices. Now these are fantastic because they have two different ways of cleaning your concentrates. When you buy these gold hogs, you get two mats. You get this primary mat and a scrubber mat. And you also get a little reducer that goes in here to slow the water down. So this thing will literally clean up all of your concentrates. And this is great for working with sulfides because sulfides have a tendency to float away. I decrease the amount of pitch that's on this particular sluice box because like I said, sulfides are relatively light and they'll float away. Now, a lot of guys like to use a Miller table when they're working with sulfides, but I found I can get the same results if I use one of these gold hog multi-sluices, but just eat back on the amount of water flow and decrease the pitch on the angle of this sluice box. Spark it baby, spark it. Ooh, so thirsty. It looks pretty good. Now on these gold hog multi-sluices, they seem to perform better when the material is wet because if it's dry, it might have a tendency to float on out. And don't forget to use jet dry too. Yeah, look at that. Mmm. I don't know if it's my imagination or not, but even wet, I can still smell that sulfur in there. Nasty baby. All right, got the last of it right here. Dump that monker in there. Yeah, ooh, nasty. All right, I'll let that run for just a second, and then we'll see what's in there. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Oh wow, look at all the sulfides right there. You see that? See how they're all built up right there? And there, and there, I can see them everywhere. Look at that, tons of sulfides right there. Oh, there's a ton of them right there. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at all those sulfides up in there. So yeah, it's definitely working. Now to tear these little guys down, it's really, really easy. Just take the top off and you get a full snapshot of whatever it is that you're running through this multi-sluice. And right now, I've got gobs and gobs of sulfides. Ooh, and this is gonna be real easy too to clean them up. All right, let's fill up some water. Yeah, get on in there, get some. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Ugh. All right. Oh wow, that's nothing but sulfides. Look at that. All right, here we go. See that, all those sulfides in there? Ooh, isn't that pretty? Nice. All right, ever so gently pan those out. 
because you know how gentle I am with my gold panning. <laughs> so get yourself a rare earth neodymium magnet and a plastic spoon, stick it in there and go to town. Yeah. See that? See all that black sand stuck on the bottom? Just take the magnet off, black sands fall to the bottom. And you just keep doing that until all that black sand is gone. Now what I like to do is turn the pan around to the smooth edge and gently wash those blondes out. I don't know if you can see that. Just gently wash the blondes out, see that? Bring it back in, stratify, do it again. See the blondes up on top, the lighter material? Bring it back in, do it again. See what I mean? And that way you have nothing but sulfides left at the very end. And when you're done, you should have a pan full of sulfides like that. Now, most sulfides are not magnetic whatsoever. And I can run this over and pull out black sand all day long. But the iron pyrite, because it has so much sulfur with it, the iron in it is not magnetic. Remember, one atom of sulfur and one atom of iron and hopefully one atom of gold in there too. The next step is that you got to dry it out. Then you got to roast it because you got to get all that sulfur off of there. So it's just gold and iron that's left behind. Now, when you go to roast your sulfides, put some silicon of sand in there too. Not a lot, just about maybe one third by volume. Now, if you think that you're dealing with arsenopyrite, you're gonna wanna have an additional step to drive off that arsenic. And you're gonna need carbon to do that, which is charcoal. And I know you're saying, Jeff, how do I know if I've got arsenopyrite? Because if you break it open and this smells like garlic, well, then you know you're dealing with arsenopyrite, but don't smell it too much. And I can't stress this enough. You've gotta wear some type of breathing protection when you're roasting sulfides, because you don't know what's in the mix. What if there is arsenic in there and you just made it volatile and you're breathing that in oh it'll be the last roast you ever did all right real quick i want to show you something look at this see that it's not magnetic at all because it's got too much sulfur in there but once i roast it and get rid of that sulfur it's going to be really magnetic and on a side note i found more gold in arsenopyrite than just run-of-the-mill pyrite because gold has an affinity for bismuth antimony and arsenic and when you go out looking for this stuff in your usgs reports look to see if those other elements are combined with that because if it is you're on a winner now when you go to roast that monkey you're going to want to get it up to about a thousand degrees and if you use a common gold pan it might burn through you don't want that so you use a cast iron if you can yeah all right we'll give that a minute to warm up Now you'll know that you're done roasting when there's no more smoke coming off of that thing. Then before it cools off too much, you wanna pour it and douse it in cold water. That'll help fracture up that iron oxides even more, releasing whatever gold's trapped in there. All right, here we go. Pan this monker out. Come on, get out of there. Ooh, you little stinker, get out of there. Now you notice that the the sulfides have turned red. You see that? Here, let me get this water out of there so you can see that. See how they're a dark red? Yeah, now you understand the redder the better because when mother nature oxidizes the sulfur out of some of these sulfide infill vein structures, then this is what you get. This is where the phrase gold wears an iron hat comes from, is that when you have sulfide rich infill vein structures and they outcrop, they weather away naturally over thousands if not millions of years. And they naturally come up looking blackish red. Remember I said, look for your blacks and your red. Those are 
are the caps or Gaussian caps that are on top of those sulfide rich veins. And if there's any gold in them, it's gonna be easy to extract because all you got is iron and gold left behind. All right, so I'm pan this stuff out and see if I got any gold in. Now, if I really wanted to get crazy with this, what I could do is I could mix one to one ratios of litharge with it and then I could get a big old nasty lead bead and then cupel it and get gold out that way. But I'm gonna pan this first of all to see if there's any type of free mill gold in it because I'm not wasting all my time until I know for sure. And that's what you should be doing too. And another thing is, look at this. Look at that. Now the sulfides are magnetic. See that? Isn't that cool? That's because we took away all the sulfur. And when you take away all the sulfur, all you got left with is iron and possibly gold. Now keep in mind that not all pyrite has gold in it, but it can have gold in it and it can be a really good indicator mineral too. Now let's see what we got going on in there. I'm not expecting a whole bunch of gold, but I would like to see at least one piece one very fine piece. All right, I'm gonna get my spectacles on. Oh yeah, I've already got gold. I got a lot of gold. What? Holy cow. Look at this. There's a piece there. There's a piece there. There's a whole bunch of little finds in there. Let me see if I can tap them up for you. There's one there, one there. One there, one there, one there, one there, one there. And I bet you there's a whole bunch underneath there too. Oh, there's all kinds of little pieces in there. Just gobs and gobs of them. We put all that material underneath one of our microscopes. And here you can see all the different material. You can still see some sulfides that haven't roasted out. Oh, there's a piece of gold right there and there's some more gold. You see all the, the red, deep red hematites in there. Ooh, isn't that nice? That's what happens when you roast it out. And there's all these different fine pieces. Of course, I could have roasted it a little bit longer. You're supposed to roast for about a half hour, but I was pretty quick about it. So that's why I still have some sulfides in the mix. And you can see where some of them are transitioning out of the sulfides, the gold is. And there's also some larger pieces in here floating around too that I thought was pretty spectacular. You can see those right there in the center of the screen. And of course, there's still some sulfides that need to be roasted out. Actually, there's a whole bunch of sulfides that need to be roasted out. And then there's some larger pieces there in the center of the screen. You can see that. And then all the crystal structures and little pieces of iron, hematite. And it's beautiful looking. But see all the sulfides? So I would recommend to you, if you're going to do this, roast for at least a half hour. You have to constantly stir it to, so you can oxygenate it and get the sulfides or the sulfur to burn off. Because if not, you're going to be stuck with this kind of problem that you see here. Look at that. That is incredible. What you can do is that you can run this with some litharge and get a prill out of it, a, a little tiny button of lead, and then you can cupel that to get the gold out. You see how that works? There's a company out there called Action Mining Supplies, and they make a special flux that you mix with your sulfide ore. You don't even have to roast, so you don't have to worry about breathing in all that sulfur dioxide. You just mix it and you go to town. This is fantastic. Now, if I could only remember where this stuff came from. On the 7th of this month, October, we're giving away a brand new Gold Monster 1000, nine bags of pay dirt, 10 silver bars. I know it sounds like a Christmas song. And a monster bag of pay dirt. It's a monster. Now, if you want to get involved with all this stuff, just click on the little icon that looks like that at the end of the video. Make a $10 pledge and you're in like play. And I'll see you on the next video. <laughs>